Gore-Tex is changing. Well, some Gore-Tex is changing. WL Gore and Associates have come out with a new waterproof membrane after many years of research, Gore-Tex EPE. Something that we'll go into a little bit more over the course of this video. But first, how about a little history on Gore? So Gore-Tex has been out there in the industry for a very long time. You know, it's a reliable form of windproofing and waterproofing. They've got various products. Obviously other waterproof membranes are available, but for this video, we're gonna be focusing on these guys right here. Uh, so Gore was founded in 1958 by W.L. Gore and uh, his wife Genevieve, so it should be Wilbert. And they founded that based on wanting to explore a little bit more about the properties of PTFE, polytetrafluoroethylene, uh, which is quite a mouthful, so we're gonna call it PTFE for this video. You might know PTFE a little bit better as the brand name Teflon, um, but I wouldn't be using your frying pan for the outdoors, it's not very useful. Keep that for frying eggs, keep your jackets for going outside. So things really kicked off in 1969 when Bob Gore, uh, Wilbert and Genevieve's son, discovered EPTFE, so expanded polytetrafluoroethylene. By rapidly expanding PTFE, you get some different properties that are very useful for waterproof products, so waterproof and outdoor clothing. Namely, it was very durable, it was waterproof, and it was breathable. And that was really where Gore-Tex started to develop into something that was really suitable for clothing, because they initially started with Teflon-style tapes, um, cables and all sorts of other things that were a little bit less useful for your outdoor pursuits but then 1969 when Bob discovered that it was really the start of rapid changes for Gore that led them into the outdoor industry in a much bigger way. But moving forward after that initial discovery in 1969 by the time we get to 1976 Gore-Tex has found its way into clothing and that's where things for the outdoor industry really started to change so you could reliably go outside and stay dry but the key thing there was it was also breathable. Add in another few years, 79, you get seam taping. So fast forward into the 80s, it found its way into gloves, boots, and even snuck into the spacesuits of astronauts aboard the Columbia Space Shuttle. So Gore-Tex has been in space, which is kind of cool. Uh, after that, Gore have continued to adapt and evolve. By the time you get to 1989, you then get their guaranteed to keep you dry promise, which still goes to this day. They're very proud of it. They're very proud of the fact that they hold themselves to a high standard when it comes to keeping your waterproof clothing waterproof to keep you dry. So that guarantee is still in action today on all of their products, including the new EP membrane, which again, we'll talk about a little bit more later. So the main difference there, after fast forwarding all of those things, were with EPTFE. That's been Gore's main membrane of choice throughout all of this. That's what most products in today's market have been using up until the introduction of EPE. Now, EPTFE and EPE probably sound quite similar, and that's with good cause because, you know, a lot of the letters are actually the same, there's just less of them. So, the change over to EPE goes from expanded polytetrafluoroethylene to expanded polyethylene. And so, a lot of the components are still the same there, but you have lost the, well, the tetrafluoro element of that. So, those refer to uh, PFCs, or rather PFCs of environmental concern, which are known as forever chemicals. So they don't tend to break down in nature, they kind of permeate the environment and we don't really know exactly what they're doing, we just know that they're not good for the environment and the outdoor industry as a whole is trying to move forward in either reducing their usage or getting rid of them completely and that's where EPE really comes into play. So what is Gore-Tex EPE? Well, as I mentioned before, EPE is expanded polyethylene, but that doesn't really mean a whole lot. In practical terms, it is still a durable, waterproof, breathable membrane, the same as EPTFE-based Gore-Tex products. So all of those products that are out there in the market already, it will perform very similarly to them. Gore has assured us of that, but there are a few slight differences in the way that the EPE membrane works. So the EPE membrane has a bit of a softer handle to it, first and foremost when it's in combination with preferred face fabrics, sometimes of a recycled content, again, sort of reducing the environmental impact. So things like this Tierra Acti jacket that I'm wearing here is really soft to the touch. You'll notice that on some other Gore EP products as well. But beyond that, it's still waterproof, it's still breathable. The membrane is slightly thinner than an EPTFE product. 
So your care of those products will elevate a little bit with Gore-Tex EPE versus other waterproof products. Uh, that's not to say that EPA performs any worse, but you will be washing it more frequently with dedicated performance washes and proofs from Nick Rats, Grangers. Other brands are also available to keep it performing at its tip top. So when the, the jacket no longer starts beading and wetting out, which is very easy to see because the, the face fabric will darken and start to absorb water, you basically lose breathability of your waterproof jacket. So the jacket itself, unless there's a physical tear or damage to any of the membrane, will still be waterproof, but that moisture vapor that you've created then can't get out, it can't escape. So caring for your EPE products is gonna become a little bit more of a prominent thing to reintroduce DWRs to reintroduce water repellent coatings to the outer to keep them in tip top condition. Now, one thing that's very important to stress is that EPE products will still perform. They will still perform pretty much the same as any other EPTFE based product. Gore have reliably informed the industry at large of that, that they are happy with the performance of EPE. That's why they've released it to market. That's why many brands have started using their products, uh, their, their EPE based product in new garments. So Tierra are a great example of that. So I'm wearing a Tierra Axi jacket. You've also seen some footage of Lucy wearing a Tierra Axi in the ladies fit. Uh, but it's not just Tierra that have taken on EPE. Some of the other brands that we stock that are starting to, to use that product and releasing it to their ranges include Mountain Equipment and Rab. The industry at large, wider, you're also looking at mass adoption from people like Patagonia, Arcteryx, Atlas Terex. The list goes on. You know, the industry is responding to Gore's call to action for using more sustainable products and rising to it. Now, EP isn't replacing EPTFE based products yet. It's been put into the range to complement some of the other products that are out there. But you will see more of EPE's um, Gore Diamond logo that would normally be on this jacket if it was hanging up in, in a shop. You'll see that more out and about in the wild. And EPE is the future that Gore has looked to invest further into. It's where they see the future of their products. So you'll see a lot more EPE out there in the future. And it's important to realize that that's the way the industry is going. So everyone's getting behind it. You just have to think a little bit differently about the way that you're treating your jackets to maintain their maximum performance. So with the introduction of EPE, we're predicting that there might be a slight change in the way that the average consumer uses Gore-Tex products. So it's quite common, including us ourselves today, for people to take out a waterproof jacket and just use it as both a windproof and waterproof layer. that is also just sort of a, a generally robust outdoor layer. You just throw it on, walk out the door, kind of, that's it, you, you're out for the day. When you're using EPE based products, because they are both a little bit more breathable and a little bit lighter than traditional Gore-Tex then, you may find yourself being able to wear a slightly heavier mid layer underneath because they're a little more breathable, to keep yourself a little bit warmer and kind of maintain, um, maintain a little bit more warmth when you're out or using them for slightly faster paced activities. They're also being a little bit lighter means that they'll pack a little bit smaller so you can use them and stuff them into a smaller bag so you can carry a lighter load when you're out on the hills, which is always a bonus. You always want to try and carry a little bit less weight. Now with EPE, we may also find that more people don't reach for their shell unless they absolutely need it in the conditions that you'd expect to use a waterproof. You might be reaching for windproof alternatives or quick drying garments for those other times and then really just reaching for your Gore EPE shell when you need extra protection and then stashing it in the bag for other times because it's that little bit lighter, a little bit smaller. You don't really need to be wearing it all the time. That will also extend the lifespan between uses when you need to wash and reintroduce that DWR coating to the outer. So your Gore EPE shell will last longer before needing to be reproofed. Gore-Tex really believe in, in EPE. It's the future that they are investing in and they are still happy to claim that it falls under their, under their guarantee. So we believe in it too. It's waterproof, it's breathable, it's still Gore-Tex.